Hey everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. So on today's video, we're gonna be setting up another altar. This time it is a peaceful transformation altar. <music> So at this time of year, I should probably be setting up my Mabon altar. I set it up every year, and yet this year, I just wasn't feeling it. And actually, if I was going to set it up, I really should have set it up last week, considering Mabon has kind of already come and gone. But regardless, I wasn't really feeling Mabon this year. There's just something about this year that's just made me feel kind of not festive for all of the celebrations and especially in the UK the weather here is a little bit all over the place it feels kind of like April showers and like the middle of summer in autumn it's a very odd combination so I already wasn't really feeling a Mabon altar this year and I did question whether or not I should just leave my Lamas altar up because I did really enjoy that altar but then a lot of rather negative things started happening in the lives of people around me difficulties and new starts and transformations with loss and illness and changes and upheaval and I figured if I was going to create an altar at this time of year, it wasn't gonna be a pretty decorative altar for a festival. I wanted it to be practical. I wanted it to be able to help the people that I care about the most while they go through really difficult changes in their lives and also the lives of people around them. So I decided this time was gonna be a manifestation altar and it's gonna be for peaceful transformations. And I, I chose that really because it encompasses a lot of change. It's not just about illness, it's not just death, it's also job change, it's financial change, it's romantic change. It really encompasses all forms of transformation that people might experience. And it allows me to do one altar that I hope will be able to assist the people around me that I care about that are going through some really big changes. Now I know that the past couple of years have been very difficult for a lot of people. And so maybe this style of altar is something that you might be interested in making. Maybe it's something that you might want to do for yourself. So if that is the case, I hope that this altar can offer you some inspiration for what you might want to do yourself, or it's just something really pretty to look at. Now for most of my altar setups, I do time-lapse, and some of this video is going to be time-lapse, but I wanted to add a little bit of extra information for how I actually did certain things, because this altar has a little bit more purpose behind it than some of my others. The central feature of this altar is going to be a candle, because if you've been here for a while, you know that candle magic is my most used form of magic. I always go back to it. Now, at first glance, this might look like a plain old boring candle, and I suppose to some people it probably is. But when I was in Glastonbury at the start of July, I looked at these peace candles in Star Child, and I was like, I kind of want to get it but I don't understand why I want to get it. It's not the kind of working that I typically do on a normal basis. I got it thinking I should probably follow my gut instinct and now I'm very glad I did. Because although this might look like a plain candle, it actually is infused with oils. Now I do have the little information sheet here that came with it. The oil infusion contained in this candle is association with meditation, prosperity, protection, and purification, which I thought was really useful and actually, it does smell different than the other Star Child candles, I'm assuming because it is infused with this oil. So I'm not actually gonna be dressing this candle like I would normally dress my spell candles. So instead, I decided I wanted to create a unique sigil for this particular working that I could then carve onto the candle and use that as the main focus for this altar which is exactly what I did. It's just, you can't see it. It's on this side of the candle, not your side of the candle. So I decided to walk you through my process of going from this to a completed carved candle. Now I haven't shown all the steps, mainly because it was very time consuming, very messy, and I don't have a space set up yet where I can really show you exactly how I did it. But in the future, if you would like videos on this style of candle carving, or if you would like a video on this style of sigil making, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I could always leave a pinned comment for you to like, like and comment on if you would like to see those kind of videos going forwards. So I started with a phrase. 
Because I wanted this sigil to be the main focus of this altar, I wanted it to be really significant, and so I needed to pick exactly the words that I was going to use. Now, my other technique for making sigils, I have a video on already, I will link it up here, is really good if you're using just one word. But if you're using really long words or multiple words, it can get a little bit confusing, a little all over the place. So for this technique, I decided to use a different version of sigil making, and so I could go with a longer phrase. This time I went with peaceful transformation, because I thought that really encompassed everything that I wanted to assist with in this particular working. Now I did have a few options, I did think about smooth transformation or smooth transition, but considering this is a peace candle, I figured peaceful transformation is probably the best option to go for. Now with this style of sigil making, you have to remove all of the vowels and then remove all of the duplicate letters. And when you're done with all of that, you end up with a collection of nonsense letters that don't really make much sense. Now for this technique, I typically use a circle as the base. So I start with a circle and then I will slowly but surely piece together all of the letters and symbols into the circle and create a very odd, if very decorative seal or sigil that I can then add into spell work and ritual. Now this isn't the process I would typically use for making sigils, mainly because it takes a lot longer than my other technique that I've spoken about before, but I really wanted something extra decorative for this, especially because it was going to be the focus point of this entire altar. So I took my time with it, and although the footage I'm adding in makes it look like a really quick process, I edited this footage to make it only be the bits that were useful that I ended up using. I was actually sitting in bed for several hours this morning, just messing around with the imagery, changing stuff around, flipping it, figuring out what looked right, figuring out what didn't, and this was ultimately the end result, and I was so happy about it. So I transferred it into my editing software, rescaled it, printed it out, and then I transferred it onto the candle. It goes from being a digital file that looks like this into being a candle that looks like this. Now this was not a quick process, it's one of the many reasons why I didn't film myself doing it. If I was going to do it in the future, I would dedicate a whole video to it because this took me several hours, but I'm so happy with it and oh, I'm so chuffed. So this is actually carved and then filled in with colour. So it's not just drawn on. So actually when you touch it, I can rub over this and I know that that colour isn't going to go anywhere because it's actually in the wax. It goes in about half a centimetre-ish into the wax. So I've carved into the candle, which makes them so nice. And if you would like to see this kind of thing appear on the website, because I know some of you ask me for plain candles like this, if you would like carved candles like this on the website, please let me know as well, because I always want to do what you would like to see. And I love doing this style of candle. So if it is something you'd like to see, I would be very happy to do them for the website because that would be really awesome. Anyway, back to what I was talking about. So now I've got this candle finished as it is. This is basically the candle done. Now, when it comes to a sigil like this, I am going to be charging it twofold. So I am going to be charging this before I burn it, essentially imbuing the candle with my energy as well as charging the sigil. And then as the candle burns, the burning of the sigil is then going to activate it again. So it's going to be a twofold charge and activation. Now with sigils, usually you pick one or the other. Either you have a passive sigil, which is usually time releasing, which means you charge it when you're creating it. And then over time, the results slowly manifest. And then you have a destruction or an active sigil, which is activated and charged by its destruction. This is a little bit different because obviously this candle is very large. It's going to be burning for several nights. I wanted something that was both going to be time releasing and destruction activated so that it's slowly manifesting as it's just sitting around. But then when the fire meets it, it's suddenly going to be a whole lot more charged. That was really my plan when it came to this, so hopefully that is how this works. So I will sit with this for several minutes and think of my intention and my goals, 
before I end up finishing and adding it onto the altar. Now the rest of the items on the altar are all associated with transformation in one way or another. Many of you know that I do work with transformation deities such as Keridwen, and so I do have a few extra pieces that are associated with transformation in the mythology that I personally follow. So there's gonna be some cauldrons on there, some dark goddesses. I'm so happy with how everything is in my mind. Now whether I can transfer what's in my mind onto an altar, I'm not quite sure, but this was an altar that took a lot more time for me to set up, so hopefully it turns out all good. So I'm gonna go and set all of my equipment up so I can film me setting up the altar, and then I will be back with you at the very end so we can talk a little bit more about it. Yes. Yes, we shall. And I'm hoping that the light will stick around because it's already like half past five, it's taken me all day to carve this stinking candle. Like all day. <laughs> I started this at 11 a.m. and it's now half past five, so that should really tell you how long it takes to do these things. Okay, let's go. is a peaceful altar, I feel the need to cleanse away any of the excess energy. Now typically I don't do cleanses that often because I do have spirits in the house that don't like it all that much, but for this particular purpose I am going to be doing it. Now for this I am going to be using rosemary, this is rosemary that we grow ourselves and by we I mean my dad actually grows it in his back garden and then I nick it all off him. <laughs> so this is rosemary that is grown from our garden, this is from last year's harvest. So I keep it in the top drawer of my apothecary cabinet. I have just all of this rosemary that we grow ourselves and this is what I like to use for cleansing. So that's what I'm going to do now, just really quickly. And for safety reasons, as always, I have a little container that's got loads of bits of other things in it <laughs> that I'm going to be using for catching the ash and also snuffing it out in as well.
So this is the altar, all set up. It's a little bit more haphazard than my usual altars. It's a little makeshift, but you know what? I'm pretty okay with it. It definitely isn't the kind of level of polished that I would usually go for in my altars, but for something as significant to me as this topic is, and for something that I wanted to do kind of on the fly without having years of planning, because I've been doing Sabbath altars now, for years, so I always have the Sabbath items ready. Having items for an altar like this, I've had to pull from loads of different sources. So obviously the candle looks beautiful in the center. I'm so happy with how this seal or sigil turned out in the middle. It looks so nice. Now, how I've actually set it up is a little bit makeshift. This stand is designed for this candle. However, from experience, the wax doesn't stop on this metal bit, it just keeps going, which means it will spill everywhere. So instead of messing up my beautiful apothecary table, I have made a little tin foil boat <laughs> for it to sit in so that when the wax kind of drips down the sides, instead of ruining my beautiful table, it is gonna gather in this and then I can use the wax remains for other workings. The goddess to this side is the beautiful goddess I got from Philippa Bowers. She is a sculptor in Glastonbury. And this is the Dark Goddess. Now this goddess statue usually sits on my Keridwen altar. There's a little tea light inside that's sat on a mirror as well. And that really lights up the inside. I'm hoping I'll be able to get some shots from different angles so you can really see the inside of her. She looks so beautiful. She looks even more beautiful at night. So I'm chuffed that I've managed to put it on this altar. Now the Dark Goddess is often a symbol of transformation, particularly when it comes to my Dark Goddess, which is Keridwen. She is a Welsh deity associated with the cauldron and she is a goddess of transformation. So I thought this goddess statue was really perfect to be putting on an altar all about transformations and transitions. Now there is actually an oracle card sat underneath this candle. It's very much hidden and I don't wanna get it out to show you now that the candle is lit. But it is from this deck, this is the Making Magical Oracle. I have been using this deck so much over the past month. All of the cards inside are for use in ritual. I'll just show you a few really quickly so you have an idea of what they're like. So you have cards for the elements, this one's fire, and then we have water. And then you also have cards for other things such as insight. Now, I do have one under the candle that you will have seen earlier. I actually can't exactly remember which one I chose, which is probably a good thing. I find that when I'm choosing cards to put under candles, if I forget what the exact card is, it stops me from focusing on it. Same with sigils, I find it really useful to not remember the exact wording that I used. Instead, I can just see the imagery. So you will know which card I put under this candle but I don't actually remember it right now and I will only remember it when I go back to edit the footage and then I will probably instantly forget it. While we're on the topic of cards, there are actually two others on this altar. Both are from the Living Altar Oracle deck, if it will focus on it. Now they're two different versions. So we have one back here that's in the cauldron and this one is one of the spell cards from that deck, and this is actually the card for Rebirth, which I thought was really ideal for this style of altar. And then I've set that into a ceramic cauldron. Now the cauldron is a symbol of transformation. It's associated with the goddess Keridwen, and so I use cauldrons a lot when it comes to transformative magic. Now the cauldron is from a lovely lady called Ali Reese Ceramics. I will link everything in the description box as always. Now Ali is the one that makes the mugs that everyone keeps asking me about in the live streams. So I have one of the cauldrons here that I'm gonna be using for any offerings. And for right now, it has this spell or ritual card in it that was done by the people who created the Living Altar Oracle. And then at the very front, we have this stunning card this is the transformation card from the Living Altar Oracle. And the more you look at it, the more imagery you see. You have fire, you have a deer, you have symbols, you have stitching. Oh, I love these cards so much. And this is actually set into an Ikea phone stand. So if you're ever wanting a very affordable way of getting your cards to stand up, here it is. This is a, like, a, it's like £1.50 for an Ikea phone stand that you can stand your cards up in. I've been using this for the last month and I absolutely love it. At the very front, we have my trusty, dusty little white incense burner. I use this for everything. That's why it's so unbelievably messy. And in it is an incense called 
spiritual journey. Now I was looking for the perfect incense to use for this altar and I couldn't figure out what I wanted and then I found the spiritual journey and I was like you know what that sounds about right because all of the people in my life that are going through really difficult transformations right now ultimately it is a form of spiritual journey. So I figured why not use spiritual journey incense, it sounds about right. At the very back we have a cauldron art print that I've created um, that might be appearing on some special things in the future so I'm not going to show it to you too close but it's there because I love the artwork so much and once again it fits in with the cauldron theme. The rest of the altar is largely made up of crystals. Now I don't use crystals that often on altars anymore but on this altar we have a lot of quartz, we have some howlite and we have some blue lace argate and then I have three quartz points at the back here and this is designed to direct the energy of this card towards the energy that's already in the candle so essentially it's combining the energy of everything that's charged into one conglomerate in a way. So this card is charged and the candle is charged but they're charged for slightly different things so I'm merging the energy from the card into the candle by directing the three quartz points in the direction that I want that energy to go. So it's going from here and into here, which is another reason why I'm also going to be using this cauldron for offerings, because it is also going to add into the energy of the candle as well. And then the last thing is my cute little hearth goddess, because she never leaves this altar and she's a very protective spirit. She is a home protection. And so I figured that extra protective energy has got to be a good thing when it comes for transformations and difficult times, you know, everyone needs that little bit of support and hopefully that is what she offers. Okay, <laughs> several hours have passed. It's actually now dark outside, which is why the lighting is now a little bit stark. It's because um, it's dark outside. It's taken me that long to set up this altar. You wouldn't think, looking at it, you'd think, oh yeah, that took maybe 10 minutes. No, no, that took maybe like two plus hours. <laughs> it took a long time. It's a lot of rejigging, a lot of figuring stuff out. And the bonus is, is with the art of editing, I can cut all the boring bits out of it. But I spent a lot of time rejigging everything and that is how the finished altar looks. I'm really happy with most of it. Most of it. Usually I'm like, oh, I love it. I love it so much. I'm happy with most of it. The one thing that ruins it all a little bit for me is the tin foil boat that the candle holder is currently stood in. Now, normally when I burn this style of candle, I don't do it on this altar. So I have an actual like tray that I use for burning this style of candle. So if the wax drips all the way down the candle, all the way down the holder, it goes onto the metal tray, which I can then just clean. But when it comes to this table, I am so careful with this table because I love it so much. I don't want to damage it. So now it's sitting in a tin foil boat. 
So we're just gonna have to look past that. But my main priority for this altar wasn't for it to be super pretty. It was to be practical. It was to be a very useful ritual tool. And that is ultimately what it is. And I've been really loving using cards for this as well recently. I've purchased several decks within the last year that have this style about them where they can be used for reading, but they can also be used for ritual. And I use cards so often now in ritual. If you've never tried it, try it, seriously. The Making Magic Oracle that I just got is fantastic. The story behind that is I got it into the shop so that we could sell it online and at events because I loved the idea of it and I of course kept one for myself and I was like, mm, well maybe I'll use this. I've literally used it all month since I got it. I've been using this deck. I love it. And then the Living Altar, I actually use more as a living altar than I do for readings. So in this instance, I used both a reading card and a spell card in one altar just because it made so much sense. So I'm really chuffed I managed to use those and especially the Making Magic cards, they're fantastic for putting under candles. Typically, if I wasn't using the tinfoil boat to catch the wax, it actually fits perfectly underneath the candle holder, which is great. And I do also use that little Ikea phone stand a lot to change the cards out. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. It is fantastic. The goddess is of course a more decorative item that's mainly there to look pretty but also for association as well and ultimately I'm pretty happy with it. Is it exactly how I envisioned? No, it feels a little empty compared to a lot of my other altars mainly because I don't have any large pieces of artwork but it's practical and that's really what I wanted this altar to be. I knew I wanted to do something, but I wasn't really feeling the Mabon thing, but I wanted it to be really practical. I wanted to be able to help the people I care about, and that doesn't require it to be super pretty. And that's just something that you should really think about if you are limiting what you do because it doesn't look aesthetically pleasing enough, or if you're limiting what you do because it doesn't look like it belongs on Instagram or TikTok. Rituals, spell work is messy, it's dirty, it doesn't always look super pretty, and all of these posts you see on social media of like really, really beautiful ritual spaces are usually done solely for that photograph. Actual spell work and ritual, it's not super neat. It's not super tidy. Sometimes it gets messy. And this is the case for this altar. It isn't the prettiest thing in the world, but you know what? It does a job. And the candle is the thing that sells it for me. I love the candle. I love the carvings. I'm definitely going to be showcasing it more on my channel because I really enjoy doing that style of practice. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully the altar turned out at least somewhat aesthetically pleasing considering this is a social media platform. And aesthetically pleasing is kind of a requirement <laughs> for people to like things, but I hope that you did enjoy this video regardless. I hope that you found it useful if it is the kind of thing that you would want to do yourself. If you do enjoy this video, I do have a playlist I will link up here of all of my altar setups. Usually though, they are Sabbath set up for the different Sabbaths. But if you do enjoy that style of content, it is up there anyway and in the description box. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to give it a like. It really means so much to me. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, video ideas, or just want to chit chat with the community, you can post it in the comment section down below. Everything I've mentioned is in the description box. And if you are setting up an altar this Sabbath or just in general, let me know what kind of altar you're setting up. What are you adding on to it? Are you setting one up at all? Let me know. I absolutely love seeing all of your altars and I love getting to hear about them as well. And if you do enjoy the magical content on this channel, in this video for me to hit subscribe I try my best for magical content every single week wow that was a tongue twister I hope you have a marvelous magical day I hope you are enjoying your Mabon celebrations or your Ostara celebrations depending on where you live and I hope you're all staying safe bye this time it is a transformation no I mean it is but that's not what I was trying to say it's just one of them days Okay. <laughs> I need to get the packaging for the candle. Don't mind me, I forgot the packaging for the candle. Oh boy, my hair is kind of messy. I had it like up. I had it like tied back like this, which maybe I should start doing for a video, but I, I feel like it just makes me look even more like I belong on the set of Merlin. Is that a good thing? Maybe that's a good thing. This is how my hair was for like the rest of the video and I like rapidly took it down and now I kind of regret it because I know that my hair looked kind of off. Like it had been tied up for the last three hours. <laughs>
<laughs> and I'm kind of shiny. I'm kind of shiny. I'm too warm. It should be autumn, but it's summer weather, and I'm, I want it to rain. <laughs> This is why I don't feel my bunny enough, isn't it? This is why I don't feel my bunny enough because it's the temperature of summer But with the leaves of autumn It's confusing my little brain, right? My little brain doesn't know what to do with itself So it overloads and then we end up with this you can blame it on the weather There we go, blame it on the weather Brits always blame everything on the weather anyway If in doubt, talk about the weather If you want something to debate Talk about the weather. If you want something to blame, talk about the weather. It's just the, it's the solution. I'm hungry. I'm gonna go eat something and hopefully you enjoy your celebrations. Look, I thought my camera's overheating like crazy. I'm overheating like crazy. Everything's overheating like crazy. The world is overheating. Ever like my I've got this little button, right? You can't actually see it obviously, but on my end I can see it. I have the little overheating button right here. It's just this orange like temperature gauge where my camera goes, oh, I'm melting. And it's just like right in the middle of my forehead. Sorry, I'm getting distracted now by trying to get it perfectly in the middle of my forehead. Okay, I'm gonna go. I think being under the hot lights for so long has made me go a little doolally. It's fine, it's fine. Mm -hmm.